Welcome to Hill Country Homilies, weekly homilies from Holy Annunciation Orthodox Church in Liberty Hill, Texas. Holy Annunciation is an old calendar Orthodox Church, sharing the faith of the apostles and the love of Christ with all who seek His truth. Now let's listen to this week's homily. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Please be seated. We've come now to 50 days following the Pascha of our Lord. It is the Feast of Pentecost and the descent of the Holy Spirit as promised upon the disciples gathered in Jerusalem. And we all understand Pentecost is that time when the Holy Spirit descended, but I want to talk briefly today about another aspect of Holy Pentecost that often gets overlooked when we talk about uh, what happened that day, and, and that is this, that Pentecost is not merely the time when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, but it is also a time when God calls all of mankind back into unity one with another. Of course, within his plan, but with the desire of unity between mankind and then mankind and God. We see this in our epistle reading today, which begins with the holy apostles gathered together. And we hear that when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all with one accord in one place. So here the apostles gathered together. They're obviously together with each other, but they are also of one accord, of the same mind, of the same heart, of the same spirit. So it begins with the apostles, but it continues with the people who hear the apostles, who hear the rushing of the Holy Spirit as it descends, but then they hear the apostles speaking afterwards. Because in the epistle it continues, <clears throat> there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And these were the pious, faithful Jews from many countries who being, again, of one mind with the faith, had left behind their family, their businesses, and their own status in their own countries in order to be there in Jerusalem. But most of all, it's fulfilled in their hearing when the apostles speak. It says, now when this was sounded abroad, the multitude came together, unity again, and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. So as the apostles speak, all hear together. This united hearing of the declaration of the apostles on that day. And it's easy to think of this as just you know, a miracle that was bestowed upon the apostles, these gifts of tongues, on this particular day. But it's much more than that. It is a reversal of an ancient curse. And we all hear about that ancient curse in, in Sunday school when we're studying Genesis and we read about what? The Tower of Babel, right? Because at the time when the Tower of Babel was built, all men were of one language, one accord, and they came together, but because they had been separated from God and left to their own devices, they did not follow the ways of God. Instead, they let, they let the pride of men creep in. And they said, let us together build this tower to the heavens so that then we may see God face to face. And God looks down on his creation already fallen and the effrontery of these men who think that they are going to raise themselves up to heaven and tell God how things should be done here on earth. And God has none of it. And so at that time, Genesis 11, 
he confuses the tongues and there is no more unity among man. What was once united is now broken apart into the nations, into the languages, into however many ways of division and the people are scattered. The Lord divided the people and he broke their unity. It says in Genesis 11, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do? You can't believe this idea they have built this tower. He says, and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And so he breaks that unity. He divides the tongues. He scatters the people. These are all consequences of the effect of the fall. They've gone from walking in communion with God in the garden to seeking to ascend by their own efforts to God in order to control or demand from him. But on the day of Pentecost, God rejoins mankind. But what is the difference? No longer is it under the influence of man's own desires and ideas but now guided through the reception of the Holy Spirit who will lead and guide the apostles. St. Cyril of Jerusalem says, for in that confusion of tongues there was division of purpose because their thought was at enmity with God. But here, minds were restored and united because the object of interest was godly. The grace of the Holy Spirit is capable of gathering scattered people of all different beliefs, races, every division that's known to mankind can be healed and gathered into one single whole under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The gift of tongues is the gift of a common understanding. It represents the removal of the barriers between mankind and our journey here on earth. When you think about each man heard in his own language, that was the gift of tongues. It, it puts a new spin on the tongue speaking of our, our modern Pentecostal churches. You know, a truly spirit-filled church is one where there is a common understanding when we hear, not when what we hear makes no sense to the ears that are hearing it. The church symbolizes and fulfills this unity. Because in the church, there is no male, there is no female, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile. Everybody is called into the fold of the shepherd. In the church, you find the reversal of Babel. We no longer seek the things of man, but we pray for the things of God. In the church, you find the gifts of Pentecost. We call down the Holy Spirit and the consecration of the holy gifts every Sunday to fill each of us with the grace of God. In holy baptism, we call the Spirit down into the water. In holy unction, we call it into the anointing oil. We seal you with it. In holy chrismation, this is where the Spirit resides. And it resides in one, one church united in mind and spirit. So brothers and sisters, as we depart and prepare for the kneeling vespers of Pentecost, let us give thanks today that the promised comforter has come to lead us into the unity of the church. Let us receive him with joy, knowing that we are no longer subject to our own desires, but to those of God through the spirit who may now direct our paths. So let's gather now in the unity of the church, knowing that the grace of the Holy Spirit is imparted here to each of us for our healing, for our repentance, and on that final day for the salvation of our souls. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for listening to Hill Country Homilies. For more information, visit Holy Annunciation Orthodox Church at www.annunciationtx.com. And please join us again next week.